Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brainbean here again. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at Razer's newest flagship keyboard, the Huntsman V2 Analog. Now this keyboard is essentially meant to, I would say replace the Huntsman Elite because it has a lot of minor tweaks to that design as well as some major feature changes and upgrades. So there's a lot to go over on this one. I also have one of these to give away to one of you marvelous nerds watching this video. All you have to do to be eligible to win this keyboard is make sure you give this video a like and be subscribed to this channel and leave me a comment down below. The funnier, the better. It's not gonna help you win any, but it is gonna make it a lot less boring for me to scroll through those later. So with that, let's check out this keyboard. Secret Lab combines best-in-class materials, a plethora of finish options, and industry-leading comfort to provide the ultimate seating experience. With models for users of all sizes and aesthetic tastes, there's sure to be a chair for any setup. Click the link in the description to find out which chair is right for you. So like I said at the top of the video, the Huntsman V2 Analog is very similar to the Huntsman Elite, so I think it makes the most sense to start by talking about what's changed. Taking a look at the keyboard, you'll see that it has the same exposed switch design as the other Huntsman variants, so nothing really new going on there at first glance. The construction here though feels a little bit more solid. I noticed that the V2 is a little bit sturdier, and it actually comes in about 100 grams heavier than the Huntsman Elite 2, thanks to its aluminum frame. If we look at the keyboard from the side, you can see that the original Huntsman was able to lie pretty much flat on the desk. But Razer changed the V2 to have more of an angle and also sit a little bit higher off the desk. Now I actually prefer this as I like to have a little bit steeper typing angle. The V2 also brings with it a revised magnetic wrist rest. This time around, Razer's removed the plastic bezel that came with the Elite, which gives you a little bit more usable surface area. And it also feels like there's definitely a little bit more padding in this version. In the original Elite's wrist rest, I could feel the hard plastic underneath. In the V2 Analog, I just don't feel that hard feeling under my wrist, but at the same time, they didn't make the wrist rest look poofier, if that makes sense. Did he just say poofy? The Huntsman V2 Analog has two USB connectors just like the Elite does, but this time around the main USB connector on the keyboard is a USB-C connector. Now while the second connector, much like the Elite, is used for powering the lights on the wrist rest, it will use just a standard USB. A Razer also includes an adapter if you don't want or don't have access to a USB-C port. And I do think it's worth mentioning, unfortunately this cable is not removable from the keyboard. Now one nice feature that we see introduced with the V2 Analog is the inclusion of a USB pass-through on the left side of the board. Now, of course this is great for something like plugging in a headset or adding an SD card reader. I mean, who doesn't want an extra place to slip their dongle, am I right? And keeping this board in line with the newer variations of the Huntsman, we do finally see the standard bottom row come on this full-size variation of the Huntsman, as well as their PBT keycaps stock. And again, my opinion on these keycaps pretty much stays the same here. I think the font is clean and crisp and most of the keys are fully illuminated, although keys with more to illuminate like your home key or a page up, page down, stuff with more characters, for example, they're just not the best. They're also a little bit less bright and vibrant when compared to most other keycap sets. For comparison, you can see Razer's ABS keycaps here on the Q, A, and Z keys, Razer's PBT keycaps on the W, S, and X keys, We've got Ducky's PBT keycap set on E, D, and C, and then we have Matrix PBT keycaps on R, F, and V. So as you can see, it's definitely possible to achieve brighter characters in PBT than Razer's currently getting. And I think they sacrifice some of their vibrancy by trying to have those slimmer, sharper characters. But unfortunately, in my opinion, I'd much rather have bigger, bolder, brighter characters really punching up that RGB, especially when a big selling factor for Razer products is their chroma lighting. Continuing on with the lighting, the underglow of the Elite makes a return, but Razer has removed it from the top side of the keyboard, so you're still gonna get it on the three sides as well as around the wrist rest. I do feel like this is a little bit of a weird change as they kept the light bar on the bottom of the keyboard, but when you put the wrist rest up against it, you're not gonna see it anyways, and I would bet that most people that are gonna use this keyboard will choose to use the wrist rest because it is a pretty good wrist rest. So I feel like if you're looking for areas to trim off, maybe to save power, maybe keep it on the back and remove the front one. On the flip side of that though, you can't see the back one, so it really doesn't bother me one way or the other. And I do suspect that maybe they removed that light strip as a way to save a little bit extra juice for the USB pass-through. And if that's the case, I do think it's a worthy trade-off. And lastly, we've got the RGB enabled media keys with digital dial, which you should be pretty familiar with by now. Now obviously the big new inclusion with this keyboard as the name implies is the analog switches. Now these aren't anything new for Razer as we've actually seen these already put in with the Tartarus Pro gamepad, but there have been a couple of minor tweaks. 
Now, one of the big features here is being able to set a dynamic actuation point. So Razer lets you set your actuation point on these switches from anywhere from 1.5 millimeters all the way to as deep as 3.6 millimeters. And a cool way to use this would say, maybe you wanna bind your WASD keys to be that 1.5 millimeter and then set some of your ability keys in game to a deeper actuation to prevent you from accidentally firing those off prematurely. Yep, I see him on the left, on the left. Yep, I got him, I got him, I got him. I got him. No. <laughs> Dude, tell me you didn't just ult. I swear this never happens. Another cool feature that Razer has here is being able to bind two functions to different points in the actuation of this switch. And I think the example that Razer gives here is actually pretty good. So one thing you could do is say, bind equipping your grenade to 1.5 millimeters and then throwing the grenade to be deeper in the key press, kind of letting you equip and throw in the same action. I do think the use of this is gonna be somewhat limited or is gonna require quite a bit of finesse because we're talking about a difference between just a couple of millimeters here in between the two different functions. But you could think of it almost as like just a quick macro even if you just need something with a couple of quick commands. These switches are linear, which makes sense as it would be weird to have a tactile bump that doesn't really happen during actuation since we're gonna be actively changing it. I really like the force curve on these switches, which ranges from 54 grams all the way to 74 grams at bottom out, which gives them a more premium feel in my opinion than the other lighter switches that Razer offers, and it offers a little bit of cushion at bottom out as well. But I do wanna point out that these aren't the silent switches from the Huntsman Mini with the built-in silicone dampeners, so you still get that nice thocky bottom out. No squish going on here. Lastly, analog switches allow for more finesse as the switches can emulate a joystick in that they can be pressure sensitive for your movements. So kind of in the same way that a controller joystick might have you go from walking to running the farther you push it down, these keys will behave similarly to that. And much like Razer Synapse auto controls lighting for certain supported games, they're gonna be doing a similar thing with the analog controls for other titles with Fall Guys being one of the first games offered out of the gate. So we'll see if it makes that game any less infuriating to play. Why are you so top heavy? And in putting this keyboard to work, I really like the dynamic actuation and the force curve on these switches just makes them feel really nice to use. I played around with the faster actuation in Apex on my movement keys and deeper actuations on my abilities and also kind of dabbled in the dual step here and there. And I gotta say all of it worked pretty well. And in my opinion, I do think that these are the best quality switches that Razer has released yet. Another interesting thing I noticed is that Razer's done some work on the rattling that comes with these switches that have the built-in stabilizers on them. It's been an issue for them in the past. And while it's not completely gone, it is noticeably better. Just take a listen to this back-to-back -back sound test between my V2 analog and a Huntsman Elite, followed by a full sound test of these new analog switches. The stabilizers here are basically the same ones that we see with the Huntsman Mini or Tournament Edition. About the same opinion there still applies. I do think they're pretty good stock stabilizers, all things considered. So with the Huntsman V2 Analog being Razer's new flagship top of the line keyboard, you can imagine that it's gonna be kind of pricey. And yeah, I mean, it comes in at 250 bucks, which kind of is almost the price of a Nintendo Switch. So you can see how some people might not really wanna drop that much on a keyboard Depends on really where your setup is at, I guess. As for the pros and cons, I'm not a huge fan of Razer's PBT keycaps. On their own, they're fine, I guess, but when you compare them to other stock PBT keycaps on the market, they're just not quite as vibrant as they could be. I still prefer these over ABS keycaps, of course, but I'd still like to see Razer take another crack at their design. And for me personally, being a tactile switch lover, the nature of analog switches having to be linear is kind of a bummer for me. I get why they have to be linear, but I don't have to like it, okay? And lastly is just the price. I mean, 250 bucks is a lot for a keyboard no matter who you ask, except maybe not Reddit mechanical keyboards. I do think though that this introduction of the analog switches and everything that comes with it is by far the best new feature and implementation on a Razer keyboard since they went mechanical way back when. 
Now, dynamic actuation on analog switches is obviously nothing new. It's been around in the industry for a while, but it's nice to see Razer get current with this version of the Huntsman, which makes it feel like a true flagship keyboard. I also appreciate all the minor improvements that we see like the aluminum frame, the USB pass-through, the USB-C connector, and of course, the better wrist rest, just to name a few. Now going forward, I would love to see Razer take this concept and implement the analog on the tournament edition as well as the mini variations of the Huntsman. I don't know if we're gonna see that or not, probably depends on how well this performs, but that would be sweet. I think one of the most natural questions going forward is if I own a Huntsman Elite, is it worth it for me to drop the 250 to upgrade to the V2 analog? And I think this is actually one of the prime examples of upgrading a flagship actually being worth it. When you look at the functional real world applications that the analog switches give you, it by far blows any other kind of bullshit gimmicky gamery feature that we see thrown on keyboards out of the water. So I think in that case, you will notice enough benefit and minor tweaks and upgrades in pretty much all aspects of this keyboard that it is worth going ahead and getting the upgrade if you wanna stick with Razer. Now, if you're somebody that doesn't have that keyboard and you're just wondering, is this the flagship gaming keyboard for me? And I would say if you can stomach the price tag and you want a full size gaming keyboard, I mean, this is one of, if not the best one out on the market right now. Well, that's it for the video, guys. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I am gonna be giving one of you guys one of these Huntsman V2 keyboards. All you have to do to be eligible to win that is like this video, leave me a comment down below, and if you made it this far into the video, you should be subscribed anyways. So hit that subscribe button, cross your fingers, and we'll see if it works out for you. Anyways, guys, thank you again for watching. Stay safe out there, take care of each other, and I will see you in the next one.